And so I, I felt like this related then specifically and directly to this passage that we're going to continue in the series as we've been talking about Jesus and the things that Jesus has said. And we're going to look at Luke 19, 1 through 10. And so I know like some of you guys have probably heard this story before. If you grew up in church, it's about Zacchaeus. And there, supposedly there's a, a song that goes through it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I got put in charge of the four and fives on Easter, and they were like, all right, you got to do songs. I was like, I didn't grow up in church, yo. I got no, like, children's songs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did not get the Zacchaeus, a wee little man was he. Although uh, Maddie, Matt Velasco, he is not convinced that it was Zacchaeus that was the short man. Because he says the text doesn't necessarily say that. Not to quote Matt, but he may or may not have said Jesus could be the short person. <laughs> I was like, be careful, bro. <laughs> careful what you say. Okay, Luke 19, 1 through 10. I'll read it, and then I just want to kind of go through a couple of the points, all right? Uh, Luke 19, verse 1. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. I know my translation might read a little different. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Verse 3, he wanted to see who Jesus was. My translation does says that he was a short man. Oh, that one says that he was, does that say that he was? Nope, and he was seeking to see who Jesus. I got the NIV, they call that the nearly inspired version. Mine says, being a short man, he could not. This one just says, because of the crowd, all right? Uh, so he ran ahead of him and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him, to see Jesus, since Jesus was coming that way. Verse 5, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down, Zacchaeus did, at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and they began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of of a sinner. Like, I, you can't like fully tell it in just reading it, but the language of the scripture there is like, these dudes are ready for Jesus to like send lightning bolts down. They're like, this dude is a sinner and you're eating with them? Like, that's how you got to kind of read it, all right? <laughs> uh, verse eight, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone out of anything, I will repay it back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save that which was lost. So Father God, we ask that you would give us insight into your word. And as a result of what you have to say to us here tonight, that we would walk away changed and the world would see the difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so I love the first verse where it just says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Which I know like at first, like at face value, it doesn't, it's like, what's the big deal? But like, think about this. Jesus, although being God, did not remain excluded from the rest of humanity. Like, although he was and is God incarnate, the one who, like, if any person should ever be like, hey, I'm kind of a big deal, like, I don't associate with you, <laughs> like, he could have had that right. But it says that Jesus was just entering Jericho and passing through. And as far as we don't, he doesn't, as far as we know, he didn't have any like reason to go through there. Just passing through town, hanging out with everyday people. And this for me has been one of the reasons why I love going to skate parks. Because my heart has been like, dude, I want to be like Jesus. And so Jesus went to like where the sinners are. So I'm going to go to where the sinners are. The skate park. <laughs> uh, and, and that's kind of where I grew up was hanging out at skate parks. Like, I love that. And after I became a believer, I was like, man, if I want to tell people about Jesus, 
I think a skate park could be an awesome place to do that. So there was this time I was hanging out at a skate park, and I started having a conversation about Jesus, and all of a sudden, there's like this group of people hanging around listening to me talk about Jesus. And all of a sudden, through like the corner of my eye, I see this dude, and he's got like a mohawk that stands a foot and a half tall, completely shaved on the sides, piercings all up and down his ears. He's got one of those like big bullhorn like nose rings dressed all in black and he is like walking across the skate park and he's just got like a snarl on his face. And he kind of like shoulders the kids on the outside of the skate park or on the, on the circle and walks right in the middle of the group and points at me and goes, I hate Christians. And in that moment, you could have heard a pin drop, right? Because I'm here talking about Jesus. Everybody's like kind of listening. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, what's Jesus guy going to do now? (laughs) Ah, hey, Christian. And I said the first thing that came to my mouth. Do you ever have those moments and you say it and you wish you could get it back, right? Where you say something, you're like, words, get back in my mouth, right? So he goes, I hate Christians. And I go, me too. I mean, ah. (laughs) I'm like, ah. And, and so I start kind of backtracking, and I'm like, I mean, I used to hate Christians. And he's like, wait, what? And now everybody's confused, including myself, right? <laughs> and, and so I'm praying prayers that don't even make sense. You know, it's like, I lay me down, uh, dear Lord, what am I talking about, you know? And, and I'm thankful that the Lord not only hears the words of our mouth, but he hears the cry of our heart. You know what I mean? And, and uh so I'm like, man, uh, you know, I, I mean, I used to hate Christians. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, I didn't grow up a Christian. You know, uh, I kind of lived a rough life. And, and it was actually a lot of the Christians that I would even see at some of the parties. And they would, like, judge me for what I was doing. But I, like, saw them doing some of the same things. And they often looked like just a bunch of hypocrites. And he's like, yeah, they're a bunch of hypocrites. I'm like, oh, he's mad again. You know, he was, like, listening for a minute. <laughs> And then, and so I'm like, okay, I was like, hey, bro, but you know what? And he's like, what? I was like, Jesus also got mad at the hypocrites. He was like, he did? And I was like, yeah. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, Jesus actually came and hung out with sinners like you and me. And he was like, Jesus? I'm like, he's really listening, you know? And I was like, so then I'm getting fired up, you know? And I was like, yeah, they always accused him of being friends of tax collectors and sinners. Those were like the lowly of his day. And those were the people that Jesus was always hanging out with. And he was like, Jesus. And I was like, yeah, but guess what? It was the religious people that killed Jesus. He was like, those stinking religious people. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm mad again. <laughs> and, 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 and so I was like, okay, what do I do now? You know, I'm like, oh. But hey, guess what? It didn't end there. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, three days later, Jesus rose from the grave. And he was like, Jesus. (laughs) And I was like, and he offers people like you and me life. And at that moment, it was like, almost like it was too much, you know? So he was like, and then he just kind of walked away. And everybody at the skate park was like, okay, and they scattered too, right? And they're like, okay, that was too heavy. But then the rest of the day at the skate park, I... I love going because I'm not very good. I'm like still doing tricks from the 1980s, right? Like maybe the style from the 1980s is cool, but when you're still doing tricks from the 1980s, not so cool, right? Um, so, so like, I, but I try to encourage people, and I don't care if they're just learning how to ollie, which is like kind of the first foundational trick as a skateboarder, or whether they're like doing 360s out of the half pipe. Like I'm amped on everybody, right? So I go to leave, and I, and, and I throw my skateboard into my trunk, and this big dude comes over, and he stands next to me. And he was like Mohawk man's like buddy. He just stood next to Mohawk dude like the whole time. He'd be like, yeah, hypocrites. Just said everything that Mohawk dude said, right? And, uh, and, and he, he's standing and he goes, are you leaving? And I was like, yeah, I'm getting in my car. And he's like, oh, are you going to come back? I was like, I'll be back, you know? <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay, well, could I get a hug before you go? I was like, yeah, buddy, give him a big old hug, you know? And as I do, I kind of step away. I'm like, yeah, bro, I'll totally come back. From the other side of the skate park, I hear Mohawk dude. He goes, hey, don't I get a hug too? I like ran across the skate park. Gave him this big old embrace. And here's the deal. 
I don't think it was like they encountered Zane. I think they encountered the Jesus who lives in Zane. And the same Jesus who lives in Zane lives in you if you've placed your faith and trust in him and received him as salvation. And by his power and love, I believe we all have the opportunity to change lives forever. And this is what we see Jesus do. And I want to go through first and foremost a challenge for me, honestly, in this first verse where he says, where it just says Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Is like, man, I want to be like Jesus and not just remain reserved in some holy huddle. Please do not mishear me. I think church is amazing. I think your small groups are life-changing. Could be, I can't even, oh, I can't overemphasize the importance of having a community of believers to come around you, encourage you, uh, leaders to pour into you. But we're not meant to just stay here in the huddle. We're meant to go to those who need Jesus desperately. And I won't say far from him because I don't know if anybody is far from Jesus. I think he is near all, but to those who don't know him. And that's what I love about Jesus. He didn't let, stay locked up in some, you know, reserved community for all the really spiritual people. He was just hanging out with everyday people. What's rad about this is some of you are already going to those places. It's called school. <laughs> you who go to public school, you're a public, you're a, you're a state-funded missionary. I think it's not that we need to go somewhere new. It's we may need to go to the same places with a new purpose. What is that purpose? Check it out. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and wealthy. He wanted to see Jesus, but being a short man, or because of the crowd, he could not. So he ran, a sycamore, he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see, that, uh, to see Jesus since he was coming that way. Check this out, verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, I must come to your house. Come down immediately. I must come to your house. Now, check this out. Jesus walked by crowd of people. I'm convinced it's not just that Zacchaeus was short is the reason why they had to climb the tree. It's that there was a crowd. It says that he had to, like, run ahead of the crowd to get to a spot, climb a tree, and then Jesus walked by an entire crowd and stopped at one. And you know what this has floored me with? It's like sometimes I feel that pressure, like every person who doesn't know Jesus, I need to stop and I need to like have a conversation with and I need to be like, hey, do you know Jesus? Like you need to know him. Okay, but hey, there's another right here. You know, I gotta go get him. <laughs> but Jesus was so locked into the Father that he had the eyes to see the one. And so it's been a challenge to me. Do I have eyes to see the one? Or do I get distracted by the crowds? And, and here's what that's looked like for me practically. I, and there's part of it is like, Maybe for Jesus, it was, it was just like he's walking and he's praying. He's like, okay, Father, is there any person here that you want me to stop and talk with? He's like, okay, okay. And he's just looking through the crowd. And all of a sudden, he's like, dude in a tree. Maybe that's I should stop, you know? I don't know. Maybe it was that. So for me, sometimes I look for just real physical things. When I'm at a restaurant and some waiter or waitress gives me poor service, rather than being like, I deserve better than that, I'm not giving them a tip. I want to have eyes to see beyond the surface. And I think that's ultimately what Jesus did. He saw this guy in the tree, and he's like, man, there's something going on. Do we have eyes to see that person at school who's a bully, 
Maybe it's because they've been bullied. For that person who's always telling lies and maybe even was in your friend circle and all of a sudden backstabbed and betrayed you. Maybe it's because they've been backstabbed and betrayed. And rather than, like the crowd saw Zacchaeus, this man's a sinner. I can't believe they Like Jesus. Hey, I want to eat at your house today. So do I have eyes to see? Do we have eyes to see? And then that next part, it's actually crazy. So when, when Jesus says, I'm going to stay at your house, this is next level. Because in that culture, to, to eat with a person was like basically to approve of them. It was to like, you're welcoming them in. You're saying, I accept this person. Like this is to unite himself with Zacchaeus. Now check this out. Did that before Zacchaeus ever had a chance to change. <laughs> Might I say, he loved Zacchaeus as he was. Because I, be, I believe he had a vision for who he could become. Dude, and this floors me. How far am I willing to take this? Am I willing to love people with the radical love of Jesus that just loves people where they are? I think about the family that invited me in. Some of you guys have heard like my story. I got kicked out of my house and I was like 18 years old, no, 17 years old, 18, and um, selling drugs for a living. And uh, a family invited me into their house to live with them. I was selling drugs to their kids. Their youngest son was selling drugs for me and got kicked out of school for having a gun. And that family invited me to live with them. That's a radical love. And it is that radical love of Jesus that changes lives. And I'm not saying that there's not a place to address people's behavior or to have heated discussions or debates or, or uh, maybe even arguments or, or to, to talk through, but I know this. To love people like Jesus did is always good theology. And so what does it look like for us to put ourselves out and just love people? And what's crazy is these people knew what Zacchaeus was doing. He was, he was a Jewish guy, so he was part of like the people of God. He's betrayed his own people, turned his back on them, partnered with the evil Roman government, and is now taxing his own people, and he's wealthy, so it's possibly he's taking a little on the extra and getting rich off of it. And there's people in the crowd who know it. And they're like, Jesus, finally you're here. Blast that dude. <laughs> and he's like, all right, you want to have dinner? No, like we're the ones, Jesus, have dinner with us. The sinner, that's the one I want. And you know what, I, you know what floors me the most about this passage is he does that before Zacchaeus ever has a chance to change his life, apologize for his wrongs, or go back and make right what he made wrong. Jesus loves him right where he's at because he has a vision for who he can become. And it is that love that changes Zacchaeus' life because Zacchaeus encounters the radical love of God and his life is changed forever. Check out what happens. Verse 8, but Zacchaeus stood up and he said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times the amount. Zacchaeus encounters the love of Jesus and he's willing to go broke. You want to see people's lives changed? Allow them to encounter the love of Jesus. 
You want to see people freed from their sin? Do you want to see people overcome their struggles? You want to see people's lives be turned around? Be the love of Jesus. Because the love of Jesus has the power to change lives. I don't think I can overstate the power and the potency of the love of Jesus. And you know what's crazy? How does he show it? Through you. Through me. Through us. And you know what? Actually, you think about this? Because I mean, I usually think about Jesus, you know, spitting in mud and wiping stuff on people's eyes and they can see you walking on water. You know, Jesus like, dude, he's Jesus, right? Do you know what he, the radical thing he did here? Invited a dude for dinner. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, he went and hung out where people were, and he had dinner with them. <laughs> it's almost like, wait, like, that's it? I'm like, dude, I think I could even do that. And I've graduated from public school. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> it's for my homeschool people. Yeah. How awesome is that? The radical love of Jesus is tangible. And you know what? I think about how not only it changed my life, but how it changed my family's life. After I became a Christian, I was like, man, I want everybody to know about this Jesus. And so I went through, you know, friends and all these people. And then there was a day where I was like, man, there's someone who I haven't, like, shared with. And it was my ex-stepmom. She had kicked me out of the house twice, actually. We had a horrible relationship. I mean, we, like, hated each other. And my dad had divorced her. And so I was like, great, she's out of my life. And the Lord laid it on my heart. Like, you need to call her. And, and then he laid it on my heart, like, and you need to forgive her. And I was like, what for all? And I had a list, you know. And, he was, and it was like the Lord was like, yeah, Zane, but think about how much I've forgiven you for. And I also knew I had done some things wrong, so I should probably ask for forgiveness, right? Like, I wasn't perfect. How many of you realize you're not perfect, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so I called her, and it was like, Zane, I haven't heard from you forever. And we, like, had this, you know, conversation. I was like, hey, I got to cut to this. Hey, um, I just wanted to say, one, I'm sorry. I know I wasn't, like, the perfect teenage stepson, and I wanted to say I'm sorry. She was like, oh. And I was like, I wanted to ask for your forgiveness. She was like, yeah, it's fine. Those are old times. And I was like, and then I also wanted just to let you know that Jesus has forgiven me for everything. And I realized that I was holding things against you. And I realized after I've received the forgiveness of God, how could I hold it back from others? And so I wanted to let you know, because I've been forgiven by Jesus, I want to forgive you. And she knew the heaviness of some of what I was talking about. And all of a sudden, like, she just started crying. Now, now girls, can I just say something on, from behalf of a guy? We don't know what to do when you start crying, all right? I'm sorry. Oh, you don't know either? Okay. We're like, you might as well be on fire. You know, I'm like, stop, drop, and roll. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, we don't know. So, so she's crying, and I'm like, oh, uh, you okay? <clears throat> you guys, I don't even... I'll just tell you what happened because I don't even have like a folder to put this file in, if that makes sense. Like, so I'll just tell you what happened. Through her tears, she goes, Zane, I had a dream three nights ago and you were in my dream and you were dressed in white and you came to me and you were hand in hand with your new friend, also dressed in white, who you said was Jesus and you wanted to introduce me to him. And right there on the phone, I was able to lead her to receive Jesus as salvation over the phone. And I, yeah, praise God, our relationship got restored. I, I do want to make this disclaimer. It doesn't always end like that. But I do maybe even think there's some in here that maybe that's a word for you, the idea of extending the forgiveness that you've received to others. 
Because not only does it change your life, but it can change others. And what's rad is like, I mean, she's still my ex-stepmom. She's been remarried. And uh, my wife and I and our like family, like, go visit her. <laughs> she's like, welcome. We call her Granny T. She's part of the fam. Because the radical love of Jesus has power to change any life. And to love people like Jesus loved is always good theology. And so I want you to think, who's one person that you could share or demonstrate or be the love of Jesus to? And let's not overcomplicate it. Jesus went and hung out, had dinner. <laughs> Sometimes it's through the small acts, these natural things that Jesus puts his super in, and it becomes supernatural. So, Father God, uh, we thank you that uh, you do work through us. God, that there are people who do not know you, who you desire to work through us in order to show and reveal your love to. And right now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if there's someone that says, man, I, you know, I, I, I need to show that r radical love, but then also if there's anybody in here who's like, I've never encountered that radical love, that you would know that Jesus is present. He comes to where we are. <laughs> that he sees, he sees beyond the surface. And he loves with a radical love. And I love how the, vet, the passage ends with 1910. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus is on a rescue mission to reach you. He won't give up. And you have the opportunity to receive Jesus as salvation right here and right now. So, Father, I pray that if there's anybody in here who says, yeah, I need that love of God, I need to receive that, that they would pray in the quietness of their own heart to confess their sins, to say, yeah, God, I, I have sinned, I have fallen short, but I thank you for loving me in the midst of my mess, that they would receive you as salvation here. And, Father, for those of us who know you, that we'd be willing to take that love to the world. And we think of one person, one name right now, how we might start. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.